Sorry about this review being a little bit late, everybody. It's been a very crazy day, as you can already see. So anyways, this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I love this anime more and more as the freaking weeks go by. Seriously, I can never get over the manliness of this series. Because, as I've said many times before, and I will continue to say it again, JoJo puts that hair on the chest because it's just that fucking badass. Okay, so this episode, what did we have? We get that next scene, Lovers Part 2. Jotaro gets his much-needed revenge at the end of this episode, which had me so fucking happy. I was waiting for that one specific moment in these past two episodes because of that scene. When you see Jotaro writing his fucking little notebook, he's like, Oh, I'm just writing down all the things you do to me if I can pay you back in full. And then you see him throw the freaking light ticket. He's like, here's your receipt. And it has his name on it. That was so badass when he gave that to Dan. So, this episode, or this little mini-arc, Dan of Steel, Steely Dan, or The Lovers, whatever title you want to give this arc, it was a really fun arc, and I love it. It was really interesting getting to see Steely Dan, Dan of Steel, whatever his name is. Two different people have told me that the manga translation was Steely Dan, and then the anime decided to do Dan of Steel, so I don't know which one is correct or not, but either way, I love I love Dan for his entire personality. He's a scumbag. He definitely is a scumbag. But from what we saw of him in these past two episodes, it was funny the way he just kept instigating problems with uh, Joe Taro. For instance, stealing and becoming a thief. I mean, when you see him, it's like, oh, put your stand between that glass container and steal that, you know, jewelry. And Joe Taro does it. I'm like, oh my god. And then you just see him, it's like, oh, we got a thief. I just wanted to see Dan get his face knocked in. This episode, though, it had very consistent animation, as usual when it comes to JoJo. The animation looks so fucking badass, and I really don't have any complaints to go about it because it's just so fucking manly. And then the music, the music is so freaking tall, as always. That JoJo music, that JoJo music always sets that mood for a badassness to come. Now, one thing I do want to say, okay, this episode, it technically to the overall plot, I guess it's useless. Really, this can be considered filler fights, but which is, I guess, logical since they're deciding to adapt all of Stardust Crusader since they have announced 50-something episodes. I'm guessing it's going to be a while until we get to, you know, Dio. So, it's just having these filler fights, this slow build-up, which is fine by me. I'm fine with the way the build-up is and they're not cutting out nothing because it's enjoyable getting to see all the different powers, different situations, and stuff going down, and it makes me grow more connected with our main characters, and so I am fine with that. And so, I thought it was really interesting getting to see the fight inside the brain this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Because, I mean, when you see that fight with inside of Joseph's head, and you see Hierophant Green fighting and all that, it was really cool. It looked really freaking cool. And then seeing Silver Terry, you know, just fighting back. And just, I get a lot of enjoyment seeing that. I mean, the fights are not on that level of, I guess... Uh, a Dragon Ball Z, like the action, non-stop action, but something about JoJo's fighting is just so artistic, the way it looks. It looks so awesome. And then you have those freaking awesome poses with Dan's, like, freaking uh, lovers. You see him posing like this and all that, that's just so fucking funny. I laugh my ass off at seeing that. Overall, a very good episode of JoJo. We didn't have progression in the main plot, but I guess we have progression in the terms of this arc, which I am satisfied, and it was a good episode. It was a very fine episode. It was a lot of enjoyment, and there's some disturbing scenes, I guess you could say, in this episode, especially with, you know, with the entire bit with the lover stand. That was really creepy, especially with the phase zooms back and forth. I mean, it definitely reminded me a lot of Majin Buu. Now, I want to tell you right now, I know for a fact JoJo made these cliches. I a lot of people have stated that to me a lot, and when I reference to like Dragon Ball Z or Yu Yu Hakusho or some stuff like that, I'm not putting down JoJo, and I'm not saying JoJo copies. Remember that, everybody. I'm just saying, though, it reminds me of it so much, and it just, it opens my eyes to different perspectives of different things I've seen in anime, so it's really unique getting to see that, but once again, I will say that the entire scene with the lovers, you know, going back and forth with his face expressions, it reminded me of Super Boo inside of his own mind messing with Vegeta. That's exactly what that scene reminded me of. So anyways, everybody, I love all of you so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. She be out. And Jojo!